Hi, we are going to discuss the updated ART prophylaxis and diagnosis guidelines for HIV exposed infants. The information contained here is based on the 2017 WHO guidelines, but also updates from the National Department of Health of South Africa. What we are presenting is a decision support tool which healthcare workers can um, use in practice to ensure that all HIV exposed infants receive the appropriate prophylaxis. It is important to know that in determining the appropriate infant prophylaxis, we have to assess the mother's risk profile and the probability that she would transmit HIV to her infant. That would be the first step. Where mothers are at a high risk of transmitting HIV to their infants, we have to give a dual ART prophylaxis. For us to classify a mother as a high-risk mother for transmitting HIV to her infant, we are talking about mothers with high viral loads, viral loads that are unsuppressed, mothers who got less than 12 weeks of ART, which means they are not suppressed, mothers on ART, mothers who were diagnosed very late during their pregnancy or during breastfeeding, meaning that their viral loads are very high. Under such circumstances, the infant has to receive dual prophylaxis, which includes nevirapine and AZT for 12 weeks. The nevirapine is given as a daily dose and the AZT as a twice a day dose for 12 weeks. We have to make sure that we monitor infants for anemia as a potential adverse outcome of being on Zidovudin for a very long time, 12 weeks. Um, remember, AZT does cause anemia and also neutropenia. We do not recommend doing a blood tests as a routine. However, a clinical assessment should be done at each visit during collection of medicine. At the earliest sign of clinical pala or clinical anemia, and a blood test must be done to confirm the anemia, and that would be a full blood count. Where a mother has a, a, um, um, a current viral load result which shows suppression that the virus is under control or she had been on ART for more than 12 weeks, we classify that mother to be having a low risk potential for transmitting HIV to her infant. The infant should receive infant prophylaxis, which is nevirapine for six weeks. Where the risk is unknown, which means we do not know the HIV status of the mother for whatever reason, or the child has been brought in as abundant or as an orphan, as an orphan um, um, infant, we would uh, start the child on nevirapine prophylaxis as a daily dose immediately. We would do an HIV rapid test to check if the child is HIV exposed that is whether the mother had HIV or not. If the rapid test is negative, it confirms that the mother did not have HIV, therefore the nevirapine must be stopped. If the rapid test result is positive, it confirms that the child is HIV exposed. We therefore need to continue the nevirapine for six weeks and do a PCR test. This PCR test would be done to now check, now that the child is HIV exposed, is the child infected with HIV or not. If the PCR test results come back and the PCR is negative, it says we have an HIV exposed child who is not infected with HIV at this stage. We therefore need to continue nevirapine prophylaxis and follow the testing um, um, schedule for infant for HIV exposed infants. If the PCR test results come back positive, it confirms that the child is HIV um, infected. We have to stop the nevirapine and start the child on appropriate triple drug therapy. In the South African context, we would prefer to use um, Abacave, Lamivudin, Lopinave, and Retonave. Just remember that every time when we diagnose HIV, we need two tests. 
okay so now that the first PCR was positive we would have to repeat a PCR to confirm we need two positive PCRs and this should not delay the start of art however this re it's quite important to ensure that the results of the second PCR are checked to either confirm or exclude HIV infection um, the fourth group um, which we are going to talk about it's babies who are born or babies who are being breastfed but basically it's babies who are exposed to a resistant virus where a mother had been on ART for more than six weeks and the viral load remains high and uh, detectable especially where we have two confirmed viral loads above a thousand which means we have confirmed failure these infants must receive dual prophylaxis, for, which includes AZT and nevirapine for six weeks. We have to switch the mother as soon as possible to second line or third line or the appropriate regimen based on whether the mom at this stage is taking first line or second line um, ART. Um, if the mother is having two times unsuppressed viral loads and she's taking second line ART, okay, this is a medical indication for formula feeds. It is not a law. We cannot enforce it on patients. However, a discussion has to happen and the recommendation is that breast feeds need to be interrupted or, or, or be stopped, be replaced by formula, which must be provided in South Africa by the public health system the testing um, 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 protocol in south africa is that an hiv pc dna pcr should be done at birth for all um, 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 our our kids or our children um, a repeat test should be done at 10 weeks um, a follow-up um, um, test should be done at six weeks after cessation of breastfeeds or at any time when this test is indicated um, where we, 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 we suspect that the mother is not adherent or we have a child who presents with uh, symptoms suggestive of HIV infection we should do a DNA PCR all babies who are on an extended nevirapine which is a 12-week nevirapine should receive their repeat test again at 18 weeks we are referring to the high-risk groups, but also um, um, those where the mothers were not suppressed or with the, where, mother, where we suspected the mothers could be failing um, ART. These two groups would also receive an additional PCR at 18 weeks um, during the EPI visit. <coughs> we are going to summarize um, our topic by going through um, this case study um, of Tsepo, who is a six weeks old HIV exposed baby who has a suspected HIV related disease who presented at a clinic. And uh, the, 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 the Tsepo's information is that firstly, his birth PCR was negative. Um, he's currently being breastfed and the mom continues to breastfeed Tsepo was started on nevirapine um, from birth and the mother was diagnosed with HIV two weeks before delivery and had been on triple drug ART therapy since then. Okay, so one of the first questions obviously to ask is that at the time of birth, okay, Tsepo was Tsepo at the low risk or at the high risk of acquiring HIV from his mom? And uh, the answer is high risk. Why? Because at the time Tsepo was born, the mother had only been given ARVs for two weeks. So the appropriate regimen at that time was supposed to be a dual prophylaxis of AZT, which is Zidovudin and Nevirapine, for a minimum duration of 12 weeks. Okay. Um... Now, Tsepo is six weeks old. He has an HIV-suspected related disease. Um, remember, we said that you can do a PCR anytime. Okay, whilst the birth PCR was negative, but today 
Tsepo presents with an HIV-related disease. So we should offer um, Tsepo a, a, a test today, a DNA PCR test today, okay, to assess whether Tsepo is infected with um, HIV or not. If that test result come back positive, we have to stop any prophylaxis and start Tsepo on triple drug therapy. If the PCR test comes back negative, then it becomes a bit complicated. We need to decide, do we just continue with AZT up to 12, I mean with nevirapine up to 12 weeks, or do we now add AZT, which was missed um, at birth? Um, if TEPO is negative, my recommendation would be that we just add the AZT and continue up to birth, you know, because there is ongoing exposure from the breast milk and we are not sure whether the mother has had enough you know art is the mom suppressed today you know as as we speak to her so that's one of the things we'd have to do to assess maternal adherence <clears throat> you know on her art encourage the mom to be adherent um, to review any blood results that would have been done when she was started on art um, it's six weeks. Maybe we also need to offer her a pap smear and also do a proper follow up, uh, which needs to be done on all mothers who gave birth um, 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 six weeks um, ago. Um, for for Tsepo, um we want to make sure that he's on the appropriate prophylaxis for a high risk. Um, kind of uh, situation, which is dual therapy, at least for 12 weeks. Um, Tepo will get a PCR test today. They would have to come back as soon as the results are ready or within seven days. Um, a repeat PCR um, would be determined by the current PCR results. So if this PCR comes back positive, we start Tepo on heart. If it's negative, we probably need to do another PCR um, at 18 uh, weeks, which is four weeks from 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 uh, when the nevirapine would have been stopped. Um, Tepo is also eligible for cotrimoxazole prophylaxis because he's six weeks old. It will be started today, and it will be continued as long as the mom is breastfeeding. Um, yeah, and then in terms of um, um, the whatever. HIV related disease we have to treat and manage it today um, unfortunately Tsepo comes back uh, four months down the line he's getting pneumonia you know um, the basic recommendation is that if he his PCR is still negative we would have to test Tsepo again at four months we would have to continue the bacterium prophylaxis we would have to manage this pneumonia um, we always recommend using uh, local guidelines and in the primary health care setting, your, 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 your integrated management of childhood illnesses, IMCI guideline, would guide as to how you should approach um, a baby who's less than one year who presents with severe pneumonia. Okay, thank you very much for listening to this topic. I hope that it was worth your time. Please share this video, this presentation with your colleagues. Let's make sure that every clinician in our province, in our country, is uh, knowledgeable and has skills to respond to the needs of HIV-exposed babies. Thank you for your time.